Well, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us here this morning at the Marine and Maritime Careers Expo. My name is Chris Greentree. I'm an industry lead with TAFE New South Wales, and we're streaming live from the Department of Education on the fourth floor at Phillips Street in Parramatta. If my data's correct, we've got about 38 schools participating today uh, with a little over 620 students. So great effort and thanks for joining us. Joining us today will be representatives from TAFE New South Wales, Department of Education, Transport for New South Wales and Industry. Greenlight Day is a New South Wales based industry and government awareness activity to highlight careers in the transport industry. Now as this event is uh, taking place in a virtual space, I want to acknowledge that we're all standing upon the lands of different nations. I'd like to a moment to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the nations we are meeting from, and I want to pay my respects to Elders both past, present and emerging, and extend my respect to other Aboriginal and or Torres Strait Islanders. By now I'm assuming that everyone has been in um, Zoom meetings before, and you're quite familiar with the chat function. So there's an opportunity later on in this meeting to um, have a question and answer. So if there's any burning questions, please put them in the chat. Amy Greenshields will be monitoring those and uh, will uh, respond to those at the end of this meeting. To the head teachers and careers advisors connecting with us this morning, um, I just want to remind everyone that this meeting will be recorded and made available through the team site. So we'll have some videos and other resources available so that we can come back and uh, reference today. So what does a career in the boating industry look like? Well, a few weeks ago, um, our camera crew went out to the water and we had a bit of a look to see what a career in the boating industry would look like. So I might get our producer here to start streaming a quick video. What I enjoy about working in the marine industry is always really positive. Everyone's looking to help you, especially when you're, you're a younger kid. If you're young and looking to get into this industry, definitely have a go, put that foot forward and it'll go a long way. How I got this job was through work experience from school. Uh, we contacted the manager here and he was happy to take me on and through that I got a job out of it. I never thought I'd be in, in the boating industry. I was working in a bottle shop and one day I started washing down a yacht twice a week for some extra cash and then I realised I really liked working on the water. And then from then on I got my deckhands qualification. That's when I started working on the island uh, in Sydney Harbour. Everyone was good to work with and being out in the elements and just mingling with people it, it really appealed to me and now I can really see a future in the industry. Every day is different. You're never doing the same thing. Because you've got a, such a broad aspect of you know, work that you do, you can utilise it in every day and also in other trades as well. It's no point doing something that you, if you don't want to do it. Like you've got to concentrate on what you're, you are know, aspire to do and what you, what you enjoy doing. My job has taken me overseas. I've travelled to South Pacific, Europe and some parts of Mexico. It's very different, very remote, uh, very beautiful cruising areas uh, that you get to see and, and do around the world. If a young student was interested in a trade or a career path, then uh, look into possibly doing a trade and starting from there and learn the theories, learn the basic principles. You can only build from there. Get that trade behind you if you enjoy working with your hands and that, that will stay with you for life. Something that you'll, you'll find you can always fall back on or use in, in many other fields. I did a marine mechanical apprenticeship uh, straight out of school and then continued uh, that job for over 10 years before going over to Europe and working as an engineer on super yachts. I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do when I left school, but I knew that I uh, loved working on the water. So I ended up working for a marina down in the Shire um, and then continued on there as a marine mechanic when I finished my apprenticeship. It was all after school and that TAFE that I learned everything to become a captain. This is like the first thing in my life that I actually want to do by myself. And then these courses that I've done at TAFE, it's something I wanted to do and learning everything about it is just opened my eyes to how good learning actually can be if it's something that you like to do. It was what I wanted to do. I knew that I wanted to do that as a trade. Teachers are good, they, they taught well and you know everyone got along, so it was a good, good thing to do. I did um, woodwork and design technology and my teacher from that class actually uh, recommended I, I do boat building. I 
a passion for the industry is probably what's what's led me down this path. There's probably two things that, that really appeal to me. Uh, you meet a very interesting and diverse range of people. You know, I'm a people person, so we spend a lot of time, you know, getting to know people and, and catching up with them and chatting and, and learning about them. And, and I find that fascinating. And obviously the boats themselves, you know, I, I'm probably only in the office half of the day. The rest of the day I'm with people or I'm out on the water or I'm out on boats. So, you know, you can't really beat being out on the water in a beautiful boat. Traditionally, it has been more male dominated, but we're seeing more and more females in the industry now. There is a lot of girls that do work as captains and engineers also. It's just as accessible, I think, these days. There is plenty of women in the industry, locally, internationally, from deckhands, stewardesses, captains, shipwrights. The best way to find a job in this industry would be to do your research online and speak to the people, head down to the marina and see if that's what you enjoy and what you like doing and move forward from there. I would recommend it to anybody who likes hands-on work, get to learn a lot, get to be out in the open. It's not like being inside all day, you're outside in the elements. Hopefully in the next 10 years I'll uh, keep doing some more courses, drive bigger boats, maybe some super yachts, go to dream big. In 10 years from now, I hope to see myself on a super yacht overseas. I got a passion for the industry and I got a passion for boats. You know, this is a great brand that we're involved with. So I would love to, to still be involved with the company and with the brand in 10 years. In a more senior position would, uh, would definitely be an aspiration. But yeah, I love the job and I love the industry. For a younger student looking to come into the industry, my advice would be definitely reach out to some of the local businesses in your area. Businesses like us are always looking for trainees and, and people to help out here and there and, and learn the ropes and come up through the ranks. We've got staff who have gone through the ranks at TAFE and, and done qualifications through there as well. And that's been very valuable for us as well in having people trained up as they move up and take on more responsibility in the business. So yeah, definitely training in a more formal place like TAFE and, uh, and definitely reaching out to local businesses uh, in your area. Well, I hope you enjoyed that one. Um, I thought I was in uh, Miami Vice for a moment at the beginning. Um, I'd like to introduce Adam Smith, who's going to dial in now. He's the chair of the Boating Industry Association in New South Wales. Over to you, Adam. Thanks, Chris. The Boating Industry Association is the peak industry body in Australia that represents the interests of recreational light commercial boating industry in all its forms. So we represent the industry who works with, by and on our waterways supporting the economy, society and jobs. So the industry encompasses such diverse elements as boat design and manufacturing, safety gear and equipment manufacturers. We have people operate marinas, moorings and boat storage, boat yards and marine services where boats get worked on and boating education and training. In the recreational boating sector, this can range from inexpensive rooftop kayaks right through to the multi-million dollar super yachts we just saw in that last video. While commercial vessel operations within the industry would include things like aquaculture, tourism operators, uh, providing whale watching tours, bareboat charters, hire and drive boats, houseboat holidays, overwater transport in things like ferries, water taxis and charters. So the BIA itself represents the public, especially regarding participation, access and storage on the waterways. The statistics are that with more than 85% of the population of Australia living within 50 kilometres of the coast, we estimate that more than 20% of all Australians engage in some form of boating activities annually. And almost one in five households have a boat or watercraft. And we've seen a tremendous increase in that in COVID times, where everyone who couldn't leave Australia has gone out and bought themselves a boat or something that floats to get involved. There's more than 915,000 registered vessels in, in Australia and over 10,000 new boats are added to that list every year together with countless numbers of those passive vessels and watercraft such as canoes and kayaks and other small sailing craft which aren't registered or licensed. This is in addition to the commercial vessels that our members build, service and operate. So the boating industry generates significant social and economic benefits to communities, much of which is supported by family businesses. In 2020, the industry itself turned over just under $8 billion, directly employed more than 25,000 people and had more than 10,000 people as contractors. 75% of those people were in small businesses employing local workers and supporting local communities distributed around the coastline of Australia. 
So the boating industry needs a skilled workforce and currently has opportunities across a wide range of skills and trades from shipwrights to marine mechanics to trimmers to people working on boats. We need everyone to fill those spots. Skills and trades can lead you to a career path both nationally and internationally working on or by the best waterways in the world. So Chris, if you could flash up that QR code, that'll help people get onto the BIA website and find out about career pathways. So now we'll hear from some marine technicians about their pathways into the industry and what they liked about their careers. The thing I like most about working in the marine industry is the hands-on work and the practicality of it being able to problem solve. I love diagnosing engines and fixing problems and being able to fix it gives me a great reward and also the customer. Having all that hands-on work is really good for me. The skills that I've learned here through my trade have been people management skills, time management skills for my own and also for the other boys, arranging the jobs that they're gonna have during the day, making sure that they're getting the work out and we're providing good customer service. In the next 10 years, I'd love to be running my own business, managing my own bunch of staff and being able to help customers to the best of our ability and having a, a great name and being a product of this marine trade. I'm in my first year of TAFE and I really enjoy it. It's great learning different things in a different learning environment and working with people that are on my experience level. It's cool at TAFE to be around a bunch of people that enjoy the same interests as me. We all just talk about what's going on in our workshops and we all just talk about motors and all the problems that we solve. We all just love it. In 10 years time, I want to be fully qualified um, and I eventually want to have my own shop. I go hard for my brother. We've both got the same passion. I'm going to have a good one. Dad wants to get involved as well. We've got guys here who've literally walked through the door and um, we've given them a position at the bottom and then they've managed to work their way up. If you're passionate about working with your hands in the marine industry and you love engines and love to go fast and things like that, I'd definitely be giving it a go. Okay, thanks Adam. And um, that video, a reminder, will be on the team's website. Joining me this morning, I'm with uh, Rihanna James, who's a Sydney Harbour uh, Boating Safety Officer for Transport New South Wales, and Jack Stokes, who's from Shannon's Outboard Service in Hornsby. Rihanna and Jack, thanks for joining us today. Um, I might start with you, Rihanna. Tell us, what is a boating safety officer? So, uh, generally, our boating day involves a general patrol of the waterways, like in Sydney Harbour, so we conduct... Um, compliance patrols. Um, we make sure that everybody's safe, but also we respond to emergency and environmental incidents. So what my day involves, I can never tell because whatever I have planned for my day can be thrown out in an instant. So, so we, we spoke about this before. Um, it sounds like a pretty exciting job being on the water, yep. but what's the thing you really like most about it? So the most thing I love about my job is the diversity um, the challenges and the experiences I have are just endless. So every day that I'm on the water, there, there's something different and that includes a different weather event or anything is, anything is possible in my day. So not knowing what's going to happen is the best part of my job. Um, How did you end up in this job? Like, give us your story from when you started, you know, when you left school, because it's a great story. <laughs> so uh, when I was around 19 or 20 years old, I was working in the hospitality industry um, for a few years there and uh, there was something in me that I just knew that wasn't for me. So I packed my bags literally and backpacked around Australia for about two and a half years. I did a lot of very different jobs from working on the ski fields in Tassie and just general fruit picking but then I got to Cairns and I got a traineeship on board the charter vessels running out to the Great Barrier Reef I became a dive instructor and also an underwater photographer. So I was diving the reef for about seven years and it was a natural progression for me to seek new experiences and challenges and that's when I started to accrue all my engineering and master tickets at TAFE um, up, up the far north and I got my first driving gig in 2012. I cruised back down to City Harbour again for new, new challenges and became a ferry master for Fantasy and Captain Cook Cruises and I obtained up to a master 35 metre and an MED2 
So that was my benchmark and I set that for myself when I was around 2008. I was like, where do I want to be? And for me, that was master four. And I obtained that, I experienced that. And then next for me, always looking for the next best thing and that was to become a boating officer. And now I've been working for Maritime for about three years now. And I am exactly where I'm meant to be and I, I just love every minute. So. That is That's such me. an awesome job you got. <laughs> I'd, I'd almost do that for free, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, um, before I turn to Jack, uh, what advice could you give our student audience about starting a career in the maritime industry? Uh, the maritime industry, anything is possible. There's so many opportunities to experience and, you know, you could work offshore, you could work inshore in any different kind of industry, the diving or transport. So if you want to work on want to work on the water and experience just a, a new challenge every day then then go after it anything's possible. And that was really evident in the video that um that we put on before. Yeah. So Jack, you're a motor mechanic, I'm a motor mechanic. Um you like boats. Um sounds like a good job. I think working on boats sounds a lot more fun than working on cars and trucks and buses like I did. Um, what do you like best about working on boats? Um, basically, like, they're, they're really easy to work on um, and I enjoy putting everything back together, um, servicing and all that sort of side of things. Um, the reward of it is really great as well. Like, if um, it, obviously people come to us with repair and service work if they've got an issue with their, their engine, um, I can fix it and things like that. And that's just such a re rewarding thing for me to be able to go back to the customer and say, look, we fix this. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's such a good feeling. Yeah, we spoke about that before. And it's like you feel like a magician when you, you fix something that people just don't have knowledge of how to repair. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you're following in your dad's business. Um, is that always what you wanted to do? Um, not really. Throughout school... Um, I was looking down a few different paths, always in the marine industry. I was very interested in, in the water and things like that. So I was looking at marine biology, but I, I, I really drew back to the passion that I had as a kid. School holidays, things like that. I used to go up to the shop and um, put my hands in a few engines and play around with a few things. And that's where I really grew a passion for, you know, service work and um, outboard engines. So basically, you know, from there on... Um, I, I was into it. I was hooked. Um, you went to Ultimo TAFE. Um, guessing studying at TAFE is very different to school. What's that like? Yeah, it is. It's it's like your favourite subject is school and that's what you get every day. So you're always keen to, you know, know what the next thing is. You, you, you're just so keen on learning and, and what the, yeah, what it's all about, basically. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Take over Dad's business? Yeah, I'd, I'd love to be running my own business, running my own team of mechanics and office staff and all that sort of side of things. I really enjoy people management skills and, and um, yeah, basically managing a team and, and having a, a full say in, in what, what sort of happens and goes on. Beautiful. Well, look, I'm going to take you off the spotlight and out of the hot chair. We'll get you back later on uh, to answer some questions to the uh, question and answers. Uh, but thanks again for coming in. Yeah, so, thanks. right, we'll head over to the next stage. So whether you're starting out in a marine career or you want to um, uh, advance your, your, your learning, gain more qualifications or simply broaden your horizons, TAFE New South Wales offers a variety of courses uh, at a number of levels to suit you. All right. So I've put a slide up on the, um, the screen and I'm hoping everyone can see it uh, on the other side of the webinar. Yep. And this is a career pathway for uh, just what kind of courses you can do and where it can advance. We start off offering courses at a, um, a TVET level. We've got Certificate 2 right up to your Diploma and Advanced Diplomas, which will allow you to um, sell large commercial vessels. Um, some of the courses we have are Maritime Operations, Coxon Grade 1 near Coastal, Marine Engine Driver Grade 2 near Coastal, Master 35, up to 35 metres, ship security, operation and maintenance, as well as the trades. And if you vision yourself um, 
sailing an over, uh, overseas on a luxury cruise liner or an international freighter, uh, we have a number of training pathways that can take you there as well, including a pathway to university. Um, I just want to focus on uh, some of our trade courses. We offer two trade courses. Uh, first one is for marine construction and the second one is marine mechanical, um, uh, which we talked about just before. The big thing about apprentice courses in New South Wales is that the New South Wales government currently funds the enrolment fee or pays for the enrolment fee for those apprenticeship courses. An apprenticeship course goes for four years where you study part-time. And the beautiful thing about um, studying at TAFE as an apprentice is you do get paid to study by your employer. So that's a real bonus there. TAFE has been in operation for about 130 years now and we offer a, a whole heap of support services to suit learners' needs. Now I'm going to... Um, Grab our next guest uh, up here, uh, Tim Stackpool. Uh, Tim Stackpool is from the um, from the Boating Industry Association. I was losing my uh, my notes there. I was stuck on the camera. Um, I might pass to you, Tim, before I get too more, much more tongue tied. No problem. Thank you very much, Chris. Look, I'm very excited about what I've heard so far uh, here today in this webinar, and I just want to go back about ten years or so at the Sydney International Boat Show, and a, a lady came to talk to us from the UK. And she was talking about the great work opportunities there were in boating in the Caribbean and the Mediterranean. And you touched on that international luxury boat business, Chris, in the introduction. And she talked about these great roles from, from being a captain to being a deckhand to working in hospitality on luxury boats to working as a marine mechanic on these boats. And basically, she was in Australia spruiking for Aussies to go and work over there because Australians were very well regarded and still are in the boating industry right around the world. Australian mechanics, especially marine mechanics, uh, in the Mediterranean are well sought after. Um, second, I, might, I should say, to Italians. Italians are the most popular over there, but Aussies come a very close second. I had to ask her, though, of course, how much can we expect to earn in these roles? Because everyone wants to know, what am I going to get paid? You know, when I leave college, when I leave TAFE, what can I expect to be paid? Overseas, she said, look, as a minimum, as a basic kind of idea, Australian dollars, $100,000. Unbelievable. But the kicker really was is that these boats are registered in territories which don't charge income tax. So if you consider you're working on a luxury yacht, your accommodation is taken care of because you're on the yacht and you're pocketing $100,000, these Aussies by the time they're 30 years of age, have already bought a home somewhere. Their mortgage is paid off. They come back home to Australia. They've got somewhere to live straight away because of the cash they've been making. Now, obviously, these days, because of COVID, those opportunities aren't around. However, if you're going into study right now or you're thinking about the courses you want to do, just imagine when you finish your, your studies, these opportunities are going to open up again, OK, because we'll be over COVID. But let me talk about what's going on in Australia. Because of COVID, people have had to stay home. We have this staycation kind of phenomenon going on. The money that people would have ordinarily spent going overseas or taking trips around the country, they have in their pockets. So the poor old tinny that's sitting out the back with the engine that hasn't been serviced for two years or whatever, or, or an even, even larger cruiser or whatever, these things are getting hauled out of the garage the marine mechanics are doing great business at the moment, maintaining all these things, getting them back in the water. But for the same reason, the boating industry is really enjoying a resurgence of sales at the moment. So there's more boats being bought right now. So if you're thinking about going into the marine industry, which I highly recommend, there's been no better time to do so because not only are we getting old boats back in the water, there's plenty of new boats hitting the water as well, which means they need to be maintained, accessories need to be purchased for them, uh, they need to be looked after and for that reason pretty much all ends of the spectrum in the maritime industry are really busy at the moment. So if you want to learn more about that sort of thing, the BIA's own website has a jobs area which you can go to. There's the QR code on the stream right now. So if you just want to grab that with your phones or just go to bia.org.au and you'll find that jobs section there. And I had a look just before we started streaming. There's Quite a few jobs there as well. Now, the BIA itself has around about a 1,000 members. And all these guys are vetted. They all have to reach a certain 
I guess, level of service and integrity to be members of the BIA. Now, considering there are a thousand of those members, you can well imagine the number of jobs there are right around the country, people looking uh, to fill positions. Um, and the other thing to think about as well is even if you're doing a marine mechanics course, think about what else you can do to augment that to help perhaps the smaller businesses in the industry. A lot of the businesses in the industry are run by families, as we just heard from Jack. You know, it's his father's business. So think about what else you can do con to contribute to those businesses, like social media and, and marketing and that sort of thing. If you can add those things to your repertoire, then you become far more employable as well. Now, I mentioned right at the start of my spiel here, my rave, that this lady came to talk to us at the Sydney International Boat Show. Now, there is a, a festival of boating coming up, not a Sydney International Boat Show so much this year. We, we had to cancel it last year because of COVID. But there is another show coming up. This will be held at Darling Harbour. There's a QR code for it. If you're one of the first 50 to actually register to go to the boat show, we'll give you a free ticket to get in there. So you can see a whole load of boats, you can see a whole load of potential employers and perhaps learn about all the various different facets there are from boating. And as I just mentioned, it goes everywhere from, from the humble tinny or the inflatable up to these luxury cruises as well. It's a phenomenal opportunity, Chris. And I think over the 17 years or 18 years now I've been working with the Boating Industry Association, it's just been phenomenal to see the breadth of opportunity that there is because you think about the accessories, the software development in, in fish finders, in depth finders, all this tech that's going into boats now as well. It's not just making sure that the thing is aerodynamic in the water, making sure the fiberglass or whatever is in good shape, making sure that the boat is well maintained, but all the other accessories as well. So the breadth of opportunity is phenomenal, Chris. I've got to tell you, I never thought of becoming a boat mechanic. And while I was preparing for this event, I was had this going through my mind saying, what did I do? I missed such an opportunity, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I, when, this, when this lady was talking 10 years ago at the boat show and she asked, does anyone in the audience have questions? I put my hand up and I said, why didn't my parents tell me about this opportunity? Well, look, um, the QR code uh, was up on the, uh, on the website. Uh, we're going to put that in the Teams um, site as well, so uh, along with all the other resources. Um, we've got a, uh, a little bit to do on the Thursday of the boat show, and I'd love to see you there. We'll have some TAFE people there as well, and um, I think it's a great opportunity to really um, help people make that decision for their next career move. Thanks for coming in. Uh, I'll get you back at the Q&A section uh, next. And I'm going to grab Arthur. Arthur's going to come across now. We're going to swap chairs. Arthur's the Workplace Learning Coordinator with Department of Ed. Thanks, Chris. 20 years ago, I never imagined I'd be sitting in front of a computer on a webinar talking to students and teachers virtually across our fantastic state. What a phenomenal concept to be able to tune into speakers locally, nationally and internationally from the comforts of your own home or in most cases your school today. Hi, my name is Arthur and I'm the Relieving Student Pathways Advisor for the Department of Education. Um, you might not know me, but what you will know are the resources that we provide you in order to organise your um, work experience and work placement. My passion and experience has mostly been in the area of career education, career learning um, and transitioning students from school to further education. My goal today is to present to you one of my favourite topics, work experience and work placement. Looking at these topics from obviously a maritime perspective, um, which is our theme for today. Ask anyone what they did for work experience and they have their own unique story to tell. The good and sometimes the not so good. I think work experience should be a rite of passage for any student um, entering senior school. I'm hoping, if time permits, that I can share a story or two as well. So let's begin. Um, why do work experience? Um, it's a topic that you're either talking about right now with your careers advisor, friends and family, or something that you'll be thinking about in the very near future. My tip for you is the sooner you start preparing, the more success you will have in gaining a really good placement. The four pillars you see on the slide are not only useful in which to consider your reasons for why you should complete work experience, but are the foundations in which your careers advisor has designed the career education program at your school. So let's dive in. Um, 
in terms of uh, work experience, uh, there is there are different stages that you're going to be going through um, into in achieving that. The first one is exploring your career options. This is where uh, your careers advisor can step in in order to guide you with that. Other than that, you can also access um, parents and whatever other networks um, that are available to you. Um, you will need to work as part of a team. You cannot do this yourself. So you need to ensure that you engage as many people as possible to assist you uh, with finding a really good work experience placement. Um, you would need to identify where the work experience might take you. What are the reasons why you're choosing work experience? Is it because you're aiming to perhaps get a part-time job or is it perhaps thinking about um, the career that you want to um, get into in the future? Once you do that, you need to develop and practice a range of new skills. Um, these new skills will be how to present yourself in front of a screen. It could be, you know, sort of uh, the resources and information, scripts that you might need to write uh, to make sure that you present yourself when you are talking to human resources or other personnel who might potentially employ you or um, get you into a work experience program. Finally, you need to, uh, what happens is you relate to the school curriculum. That's why the, um, careers education programs throughout New South Wales in public schools are vital to ensure that uh, you are able to transition from school to post-destination pathways. Okay, so what is your goal? As mentioned in the in a previous slide, work experience without a doubt, should be planned. The best outcomes are achieved this way. In some circumstances, supply and demand of work experience placements might mean that some companies can only cater for only a few placements a year. These are a few points to consider. You know, what is it like to work? What is, it, what is the job about? Um, would this job be suitable for me? Uh, what is it like to do an apprenticeship or a traineeship? And when I finish um, a tertiary pathway, will my career options, what will my career options and prospects be? In 2018, a boating enthusiast from Sylvania called Natasha Harper won the 2018 National Apprentice Award for her work in the marine industry. Uh, Ms Harper was undertaking her training at Covergirl Marine Trimming and in Sylvania, a business that designs, manufactures, and installs boat covers in the Port Hacking and San George area. Um, yeah, so there are a few aspects of um, things that you will need to do in order to get started. First and foremost, you need a resume. Um, a resume is an inroad into uh, a work placement. Um, it's the first step, the first impression that you're going to make to ensure that you can um, get that work placement. So uh, there are a few things that you can actually do. Firstly, you can attend work experience industry days like the Boating Industry Association Virtual Careers Day. You need to also make sure that what you put in your resume is um, readable. You need to make sure that um, it's done in a way where people only need a short period of time to access and read. One to two pages is probably the maximum that you should um, be putting into a good resume. It's also about quality, not quantity. So keep in mind that you may be one of 100 potential applicants. Um, so no hiring manager has the time to go through a 10 page resume. Try to format your resume to be concise. Above all, proofread before submitting. Give it to a parent, give it to your careers advisor, give it to a friend. Make sure that there are a number of people who are going over your resume before you finally submit it to um, the person that needs to have it. Um, above all, what you should be doing is accessing a free tool called uh, myfuture.edu.au for more information. Next slide. Okay, so what I've done over here is accessed um, a resource from the Boating Industry Association and um, I've had a look at the different types of jobs that are available there. Um, what I've done in the next couple of slides is that I've um, 
taken each of the roles and have reimagined those in the type of subjects that you could be potentially doing um, at school in order to satisfy that role. So as you can see with the first one, boat building is an area where um, perhaps science, engineering studies, design and technology, art, CAD drawing and manufacturing and engineering um, could be useful. Uh, on the next slide, we also have um, a list of other jobs there, like boating operations, tourism, sales and retail, and uh, professional services. These, these also have a list of different type of courses that you could be potentially uh, choosing at school that would be favourable. Okay, there are a few things that you need to think about, and these are what we call workplace realities. Okay, you need to ensure that first and foremost, that you need to be punctual and dependable. Punctual does not mean being at the workplace on time. Punctual actually means being there 10 minutes before you actually start. Um, there could be um, information that needs to be given to you before you do actually start the um, day. You need to dress appropriately. I've seen it so many times. Um, students going and applying for work experience placements um, only to be not considered because they weren't um, dressing appropriately either beforehand or even um, during work experience uh, in your student placement record. There will be a lot of detail there outlining um, the type of personal protective equipment that you could be wearing in order to satisfy that week of work experience. You always need to follow directions. Ensure that if you do not know something, always ask, okay? The worst thing that you can do is taking matters into your own hands and um, something going wrong. So ensure that you do follow directions. Have a positive attitude. Um, this includes actually being enthusiastic. If you complete um, a task, think about what the next task might be or ensure that you're speaking to your supervisor to provide you with um, other work that uh, could be possible. Uh, be also realistic about your role in the workplace. Um, you're not going to be, you know, sort of making major decisions during work experience week. So it's a learning experience. So take that on board. Um, and the one thing that uh, we worry about is students being on their phones during work experience. Ensure that you have it in your pocket, silent, um, and only access it during times where you can. Next slide, thank you. Okay, now this is a very hot topic as well, and I know all of you have been immersed in social media from a very young age, so I highly recommend that you follow these points to ensure that um, you secure what we call your digital footprint. So firstly, if you want to remain private, ensure that your security and privacy settings um, are up to date on your profiles. Do an audit of your accounts or, or profiles that you have created online. There could be times where you could be on a particular social media platform that you haven't accessed in a very long time and you've forgotten the type of information that you've provided there. Um, Employers, around 37% so of employers use social networks to screen potential job candidates. I've been involved in a few um, uh, jobs just recently and one of the first things that I did was check the social media um, profiles of people. So just be mindful of that. A third of employers also who scan social media profiles said they found content that caused them not to hire the candidate. So I guess the message here is be careful what you post. Next slide, thank you. Um, work experience can create um, job opportunities. I went and scanned a few major players out there um, online um, just to check to see what they thought um, you should uh, be thinking about when you're looking for a job. Indeed said that you should ask your network for referrals. Year 13, networking and work experience are vital. Seek said that writing a career plan and maximizing your online search is the way to go. Next slide. Um, Investopedia talked about networking and referrals. Career trend, 
said getting a foot in the front door and employer referrals were really important. Career sidekicks, use your networks to find a job. Forbes, tap into your network. So you can see there's a common theme coming out of um, these uh, you know, sort of um, major online tools. Networking is something that's really important. Okay, the slide that you see here is access to the Department of Education's um, website. Um, and I'm hoping that someone can actually provide a link in the chat box. So this is where career learning um, and the resources for work experience are found. Uh, your careers advisor is very familiar of this website, uh, but there are some uh, interesting bits of information that students can access too. So if we can just go to the final slide there, Chris. Yeah. Um, there are a few take-home messages um, that I'd like to provide everyone and that is that you should be starting your work experience research early. You need to ensure that you network with as many people as you can. Um, you never know who might be there in order to provide you with that next work experience placement. Monitor your social media posts. I can't reiterate that enough. And finally, access the most important resource in your school, and that is your careers advisor. Thanks very much, Chris. That was awesome, Arthur. Thanks so much for coming in and sharing all that information. Um, I've heard these uh, spills quite a number of times in my career, but uh, that, that was really good, so thanks so much. Thank Folks, we're going to grab our uh, other people that have joined us um, to sit up here on the, uh, on the chairs. We're going to do a question and answer. I'm hoping you've all been really busy in the chat box asking Amy lots of questions. Otherwise, it's going to be a quite old question and answer. So, guys, do you want to join us up here? Okay, so Orville, our producer, has reminded me to uh, just quickly talk about our QR code. Okay, so if you want to take a photo of that, that'll direct you to Maritime Careers uh, with TAFE New South Wales. It's a great resource. It talks about the courses, the support offered by TAFE, um, links to enrolment, uh, and so forth. Now, before we get to the um, questions from Amy, um, one of the things that I get asked a lot uh, when I attend uh, trade shows and career expos is mums and dads come up to me and they say, oh, look, I want to enrol my child into an apprenticeship course. So let's talk about the order of how that works. First step, need to get the job, need to get an apprenticeship. It's very easy. Uh, we've given the link to the QR code for the BIA. My advice to everyone out there is if you want to get a, a start in boating and marine industry, go via the BIA uh, QR code, their website. Um, the folks at the BIA will direct you to job vacancies. That's a real easy solution. Once you register as a, a, an apprentice, then come and see TAFE and we'll enrol you and get you trained. So, Amy, let's talk about um, some of the questions. You don't have a microphone. There's one coming over to you right now. Thanks, Arthur. Um, we do have some questions coming in, Chris, and uh, the first one that came through is, I think Jack may be um, the person that can give a bit of an idea to this question, is what is the biggest wage that you can earn as a boat mechanic? Um, that's a really good question. I think it depends on your experience in the industry. Um, and obviously, at the beginning, you, you start off on smaller wages and you work your way up, and if you prove yourself to be... A, a good mechanic and a good team player um, and you work in a great business, there is, a, you know, a, a, a salaries I'm not sure, um, but there is definitely potential to earn a lot of money. Yeah, I could probably answer that as well. Um, we, we find that the uh, students enrolled in the marine mechanics, plant mechanics, truck mechanics get paid a lot more money than the motor mechanics. Um, I think that's to do with the fact that People that own boats are prepared to pay for them to be safe uh, to service, whereas, um, I don't know why, but people are not as comfortable to pay uh, big money to get their car serviced and repaired. So um, you will get uh, more money as a mechanic fixing boats uh, than you will fixing cars. Arthur, you mentioned My Future. What sort of information will students find there if they're looking for information about career pathways? Sure. Um, there, there's a plethora of information um, that you can access. Uh, there are 
uh, downloadable resources uh, depending on the type of industry that you want to focus on. Um, so there are careers bullseye posters uh, that are actually right now interactive. So you can click on the hyperlinks to which will provide you with uh, more in-depth information in the area of choice. Uh, the other thing that My Future does is that it can build your own profile as well. So every time you log in, it actually understands who you are and what your interests are, and um, it can also allow you to. Um, Register your email details so when uh, you know something pressing comes out, something relevant to the industry area that you that you're focusing on, um, you'll be receiving that in your inbox. Thanks, Arthur. Now I've got a question about work experience. Um, this um, might be for Tim actually. Can you do work experience on a boat, and who should I see to arrange this? I think if you head to the BIA website, bia.org.au, and convenience is all part of this as well, uh, if you can find a BIA member who is close by where you are so you don't have to travel too far to do your work experience, I think that might be a good starting place as well. But also think about whether the work experience place you're going to can actually offer you the type of work that you're interested in. So if you're interested in, in dealing with smaller fishing craft and dealing one-on-one, -on -one, with guys that like to go out and throw a, a line in the water, then perhaps you know, a, a luxury boating place is not necessarily the place to go to. But if you do want to work on the luxury yachts, then the small little ship chandler down, down the road may not be the person for you. But have a look at bia.org.au. Look for local members who are around your area, and those guys are probably the ones to go through first. Because... Doing work experience, I mean, it can be a frightening experience and a confronting one. You don't want to have to add making sure you get somewhere on time because you have so far to travel, you know, to add to your anxiety as well. So all those things come into to play as well. But I'll always say, of course, you know, you want to look for a BIA member. So that's your first port of call. Can I um, also add to that? that? From a departmental perspective, um, there are legalities around um, what you can and you can't do um, during work experience. And uh, one thing that I can mention is if you are going to be um, going out onto a boat, you cannot travel greater than 12 nautical miles out to sea. Typically, 12 nautical miles means that you cannot see land. <laughs> so um, we want to make sure that we provide the utmost safety um, to students. So your careers advisor will have a lot more information around the policies around what you can and you can't do. Um, also, the um, Boating Industry Australia Association also has a website, uh, or an email site, um, to provide for any questions that you might have, um, that is careers at bia.org.au. Thank you. Thanks, Tim and Arthur. Now, um, this is for all the guests here today. Um, a question has come in from um, Carla. What exact TAFE courses did you do? Thanks, Rihanna. <laughs> uh, so I began with uh, Coxon, and then it was a Master 24 metre and then I went over to MED MED3, so it's a marine engine driver, grade three. Then went up to my master 35 metre and then uh, back to an MED2. So it was just hop, skip and a jump. That um, PowerPoint presentation, those couple of slides that I presented to, um, that actually has the, uh, the course numbers and the codes that you were talking about. So uh, after this, go into the team site, uh, grab the PowerPoint presentation and you'll get those um, those courses, and also go to tafenewsouthwales.com.au. Okay. okay um, anyone else? That oh, yeah, I can yeah. say my one too. Um, mine was Marine Mechanic Certificate 3, um, which is basically a three-year course at TAFE, and then one-year course, uh, or one year after that, on the tools bef before you become a qualified tradesman. So, yeah. Th thanks so much. And, and I think, too, I, I might just add, it was, it was many years after I did my first TAFE course after I left school that I was so inspired by the TAFE guys at the Sydney International Boat Show that I decided to do the, the bog-standard, ground-level maritime operations certificate one and to get through that. So I think if you're kind of not sure perhaps where you want to go to and maybe just working as a deckhand to start off with is something you're interested with, I thoroughly enjoyed doing the course. You know, I give Blue Ribbon 
uh, status to TAFE education. It's really the only formal education I've ever had, and I've loved it, the two certificates that I have. Um, and the, the course that I did in maritime operations was not only great fun, but I think gave me some great skills as well, just in terms of um, operations, understanding how to, how to behave on a boat, how to stay safe on a boat, firefighting as well, having to do that, um, first aid, uh, and even just the fundamentals of knowing how to tie a decent knot. Um, they were, they're, they're great skills to have, even though I accumulated them in later life. Uh, I had a terrific experience with TAFE doing all that. Thank you. Um, now, we've got quite a few questions coming through. Um, one is from Darcy. Approximately how many jobs on boats are going internationally from Sydney Harbour? That's, that's what, a today? good question. Today? None. <laughs> no, I mean, there's, there's cargo, of course. There's, there's very, very few um, passenger opportunities, but still plenty of cargo. I might ask the Rihanna, the local BSO. I mean, you see them out there all the time. How many jobs are going? Um, well, there's, I mean, there's um, everything from skippers down to cooks and, and chefs um, would be on board, as well as regular deckhands, um, pilots. Yeah, so obviously during, during COVID and, and this current climate, um, things have changed dramatically, but there is still international cargo shipping. They can even run out of Perth or, or Sydney. There's there's numerous cargo ships coming in and out. Cruise ships have halted for a little while, but, you know, the times that you'll invest in your education when, when things are up and running again, that's when all these experiences can, can be right at your doorstep. So, yeah, if, and when that picks up again, there's a, a lot of jobs. Okay, so Lake Macquarie wants to know um, what age students um, need to be to be eligible to sign up for apprenticeships with TAFE. Oh, on the spot now, isn't it? I think it's sixteen, but I'll have to check that one and um, and come back. But I'm pretty sure sixteen years old. And we will definitely follow up with any of the questions today. Um, we'll follow up and we'll include that in the um, team's resources as well. Um, now, this is a question aimed at Rihanna. If someone starts with a Cert two Coxswain the year after they finish school and they're working full-time in the industry, what is your advice on how many years to have enough experience to then study the Cert three Master 24 and then Cert four Master 35? That's a really good question because I think for each individual, um, that time frame is always different. So for me, I had really good mentors along the way. So a lot of the training that you'll experience uh, is on board and it's not just the courses that you do. So you'll need to accrue a certain amount of sea time to progress to the next stage. And as hard as you work, as much as you invest in your time in accruing that sea time, that's when you can start bumping up as you go and whenever you're ready. So if you just... I know some mariners that are just happy being a coxswain and a deckhand, which is a general purpose hand. And there's so many challenges and experiences with that. But if you just want to keep going, then that's when you sign up for the next course. And that's what happened for me. I set a benchmark for myself quite early because I actually had one of my TAFE teachers. Um, she was a master four and, and she inspired me in a way that... You know, she doesn't even know that she influenced me in that way back then, but her education and her knowledge was that set the benchmark for me. So um, that made me bump up along the way as I went. Fantastic. Thank you. Now, I'd like to say thank you to Jeremy and to Jen who have answered that question in regards to um, becoming an apprentice and I have put that in the chat so you can have a look at the response there and there's a link as well. Um, now, how employable is a stu school student going to TAFE for marine um, and maritime jobs wanting to captain vessels straight out of school? So what's the chances of a student coming straight out of school, um, going to TAFE, of uh, heading into a role as, um, a, as a captain of a vessel? Um, so I think, I think we partly answered that before and just want to clarify that. Um, there is sea time associated as you advance up with those qualifications. So it really comes back to um, how big a ship you want to be the captain of 
um, that'll then determine what qualification you need and then that links to how much sea time you have. Thanks, Chris. Uh, there was another question in the chat. Uh, so this is more around the work experience side of things. And in the chat, I've got a question. Um, if a student is on work experience, what happens? This might be aimed at Arthur, by the way. Um, what happens if they break something? smash a boat, <laughs> um, you know, if there's accidents whilst they're on work experience um, on a boat, what happens then? Okay, so if um, the information has been provided for work experience through what we call the student placement record, it will detail what the student can and can't do. Um, it's just the nature of work that potentially hazards will occur, um, dam damages might happen. At the Department of Education, does have um, insurance available to students, but provided that um, the employer was not negligent. So if it was um, working on a motor, for example, and um, the, the, the employer was there guiding the student, um, not just leaving them to attend to the job itself, um, that is more negligence. Um, it's, the insurance will actually cover for any damages that might occur. Um, it's really important that the paperwork does get filled out properly because if an assessment is actually made um, later on um, and it is found that there is no negligence, then the department does have insurances that will cover for the damages. Thanks, Arthur. And over to you, Chris, to wrap up. Okay, so that we're just about out of time. So I want to thank you guys for coming in. Um, and, and sharing your experiences and your knowledge with everyone that's uh, connected to us. Um, this event couldn't have been made possible without the generous support from the Boating Industry Association and Amy Greenshields from Education. Thank you so much for your assistance here. And I just want to do a big shout out to our production team at Greater Visuals. Um, they've done a superb job uh, helping us with our videos that we've put together as well as um, uh, preparing this meeting the live stream and the recording that we will uh, upload to the teams. Um, I hope to see a lot of you guys at the, uh, at the Sydney Boating Festival. Um, take advantage of the QR codes that we've got in the team site. Take advantage of the other resources that Amy will put up there. And uh, I hope to see you all soon. Thanks for joining us, guys.